So hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Last time out, we were giving a beatdown to Need for Speed Pro Street, and today, we are about to bring the noise on Need for Speed Shift. Here we go! That was a great start there. I'm in between two, a Lamborghini and a Porsche already. We're in a GT3 race here at Brands Hatch. Oh my word, we're all piling into the first corner. The flames spinning everywhere. There's a Lamborghini wide. We need three wide. This is like being back on grid. Also, sport. There's someone on my inside, you lunatic. Oh, there's an Aston Martin falling off in front. Oh, Jesus, don't do that. We're piling down into Graham Hill Bend. Oh, there's a Lamborghini on my left. Jesus Christ. Right, yes, welcome to Need for Speed Shift 2 Unleashed. As we're up the inside of one of the Aston Martins. Oh my goodness, we're coming up towards Dingle Dell. This is a very tight corner, completely blind, and the Corvettes didn't fancy that. They were side by side with one of the Porsches there. As I say, we're in a GT3 class race. This is the second fastest class in the whole game. The oh, the fastest in the GT ones. I've just been elbowed off the track by the Aston. That is just not cricket. And that Lambo, that wasp-coloured Lambo is still giving me aggro. I'm going to get on to why I love this game in a bit, but I think you can see a little bit of it right now. It is just so... In oh! Oh, a Porsche just spun! And the Corvette checked up and I drove into the back of the Corvette. Goodness me, you can't catch your breath in this race. My word. I think the AI heard I was recording this and they thought, right, let's put on a show. So, Need for Speed Shift 2. It's the sequel to Need for Speed Shift. You probably guessed that from the fact there was a number on the end. And it's the sort of spiritual third in line to Need for Speed Pro Street, which I gave a beat down to last week because it's shoddy and awful. So Pro Street kind of failed in that respect because the physics were rubbish and the setting was bad and the, the career was just a massive grind. So then we had Need for Speed Shift, which I totally ignored, basically because I hated Pro Street. And then I got Shift 2 Unleashed on the cheap, and it's been developed by completely different studios, slightly mad studios, who you'll rec recognise actually as the people who are on to do, or are working on Project Cars, which will eventually be released, hopefully sometime this century. But there's a very good reason why I'm very excited for Project Cars, and you can see why by playing Shift 2 Unleashed. The oh my god, we're going up the inside towards Dingledale, blind corner at the top, and I'm looking on the inside of the Corvette. Where's the braking point? There it is! And I've got the lead. He's wisely backed out. I think he knows I'm mid-commentary and who knows what might happen there. I'm out of breath. I'm, out of, I'm supposed to be showing you a bunch of races in this video and I'm already out of breath. At my home circuit, I am taking victory. Presumably my family are in the grandstands right now cheering on, waving flags. They absolutely love that. This game really surprised me because this came after Shift and it came after Pro Street, which was pretty bad. Firstly, the car list is very good, incidentally. Uh, you're looking through, there's supercars and that. They've really kind of trimmed it down to the, the, the kind of race cars you'd want to race on a track. So you've got the NSX, you've got an 8C Competizione, you've got one of the GT3 cars. That's an interesting thing. They actually have real world race cars in this one. The, GT, the FIA uh, GT1 and GT3 World Championship cars from this game. I think it's from 2011 or so. And then we get to this. A Mini Cooper S. The classic one. It says Legends 60s GT. That's because, shush, that's because, uh, always turn your phone on silent before recording, folks. Shut up. I didn't get this game until a DLC pack came out entitled Legends. The Legends pack came out for this game. In fact, the DLC really helps to make this game really good. You think Mini Cooper in a Need for Speed game? Really? And then look at this. Ford Capri. This is a 1970s GT car. You've got the Mark 1 GT40. And can we just... I'm sorry, I might have to change my trousers. That is the most beautiful car ever. And here's another one. Ford Lotus Cortina, a 1960s touring car classic. These are not Need for Speed cars. Need for Speed cars have generally been fairly JDM, bit of muscle, some supercars, and that's your lot. And then you have this. The Need for Speed games have always treated their fan base like they're 12 years old. Not even their dads would know these cars. But what this told me was that whoever were making this game were really taking it seriously and wanted this game to be for proper petrolheads, to be for proper race fans, to be guys who really were, didn't just love motor racing, but were really into it and were into every single, oh, there's another one, the Jaguar E-Type. Oh. What it strives to do is bring together two worlds, if you will. The kind of action cinematic, yeah, this is really kind of, meh, that's the best way I can describe it, world of Need for Speed, and then mash it together with the more serious, kind of enthusiast world of Gran Turismo, where the physics are serious and the car roster's accurate and there's real world circuits. And do you see what I mean? This is basically Need for Speed's attempt to be taken seriously, but still keep it real. There's absolutely no cutscenes in this game where someone stares at you out the window of their car, glares at you out the window of their car, and does a burnout. All right, let's find one of the historic tracks. This is my favorite, incidentally. It's a track called Ruin. It's the sort of track that you know couldn't exist now because it is 
almost suicidally fast. The first great thing about this game is the AI. The AI are really, really good. Here you'll see the AI react to things in front of them. You'll see them look like they're actually driving the cars. They'll make moves up the inside. They'll be aggressive on you. They will make mistakes. You saw that in the Brands Hatch race. A Porsche spun on his own in front of me. They basically act like real human beings, essentially. They will hit you. They will go for moves. They'll be very aggressive. It's just great fun to race against them. They're re they really do provide a challenge. Oh my good. Oh, you see there? It's a little bit of contact. Someone's on my inside. The Capri went there. Look, I missed my breaking point for that corner. And what did the AI do? They didn't do like Gran Turismo. I went, oh, I'm just going to blew the round back here. They went, right, I am having that position, mate. I am mugging you off. So you've got to be on your toes with this AI. I love that. Oh my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. Goodness me. That was close. And he drove straight into the back of the Capri there. He didn't quite get that corner right. Oh my word. He's trying to squeeze me out. Goodness me. That is, that is just not cricket. Let's have a look up the inside here. This is very... Oh, my goodness. This is probably the slowest corner on the track. And... Oh, there we go. Got a good drive on the corner. Ha <laughs> ha. Mugged you off. Nicely done. Oh, there's a Porsche up in front. Nice. I'm going to slip stream up behind this guy. I'm up on the Porsche. See, the BMW's got good straight line speed. I'll quickly show you while we're here. Look at that. Look how fast does that look. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. You see? You see what I mean? He was right on me looking for the crossback. The cutback, shall I say. So, let's get back to my preferred camera which is this one this is kind of the regular helmet camera if you will <laughs> not that there's anything regular about my helmet giggity um oh my goodness i'm being punted for making such dodgy innuendos yeah, well here we go we've got the two leaders up in front let's see if we can mug another victory shall we right we're gonna it's gonna need an ambitious move here how brave do i be bonsai oh probably not brave enough oh goodness me <laughs> and he fell clean off the earth there this is an old school track where it's almost completely flat out, even though there's a lot of corners. And you've got to be seriously brave. And if you crash, the only thing stopping you uh, is a wooden fence, a house, and maybe a tree. Third place for me back a bit. Whoops. Nice. Nice, I'll take that. What this game also has, <clears throat> and what other games are also catching up on now, is day-night cycles. What I'm going to demonstrate, hopefully, in this race is both how terrifying night driving is and just how you can build pretty much any car in this game to be a full-on beastly race car, which I love, incidentally. I love I love that. And we're on the old-school Silverstone track, the classic one. Oh, with the bridge section. It's just beautiful. Yes, folks, this is literally how much you can see at night in a race. And I'm away. Oh, my God, I'm away in my Jaguar XKR, which one day was an innocent Repmobile that was probably taking a banker to a golf course. And now it's taking me around the Silverstone Grand Prix track, battling against a bunch of stupendously expensive and fast supercars at night. Oh my god, this is terrifying. This is utterly terrifying. And that's why I love this game. It's terrifying. And that's what real racing is. There's a reason why... Whoa! I'm in the grass! That's not gone well! That's not gone well. How have I managed to save that? I have no idea, but I'm definitely going to need a change of underpants. It's, oh my goodness, that's just not gone well at all. If you wonder sometimes why some race drivers come across as quite cold and dispassionate, there's a good reason why. You essentially have to have no fear to be a professional racing driver. And what this game proves is that most of us do have fear. Quite a lot of it. <laughs> I love this game. I really do love this game. It is so much fun. Once you get the steering settings right, it is an absolute joy. Oh my... Whoa, what was that? You don't just drive into someone in a straight line, you pube. These weekend drivers, I... Seriously, I ask you. And as I'd like to point out, we have already had more action in about a 10-minute YouTube video, or however long this video ends up being, than we have in the entirety of the Australian Grand Prix. Just going to point that out. Oh, that's a McLaren F1 in front. And oh my god, that's a Veyron! That's a Veyron! Oh! I couldn't move right because there was a Veyron there! Jeez, this, this is Calamity Corner for me! <laughs> I've fallen off! This is just this has just been an absolute nightmare race for me. They're on the grass in front! What are you doing? <laughs> this is the difference between NASCAR 14's AI just being plain derpy and good AI. This is good AI in that it's believable. It feels like there's actual human beings driving these cars. Very aggressive, out of control human beings, but isn't that most race drivers? Nimsby Pro Street felt like the collective of Dartford High Street on a Friday night trying to drive a racing game, i.e. very badly. This feels like professional racing drivers are racing against you, and that's another reason why this game just feels so good. If you want a sort of real fix of a sort of real adrenaline rush, get this game. And this is why, I mean, it'll be dirt cheap now, and you'll probably be able to get the DLC packs really cheaply as well. 
So just do it. Just do it now. Do it while you are watching this video. Open up a separate tab. Find it cheap on Amazon or good old games or wherever it is and, and go get it. And what it will help you do as well is kind of tide you over until Project Cars finally comes out. Because, I mean, I know a lot of people are starting to lose patience with the delays to Project Cars. But I think this game proves why it is being delayed so much and why it will be worth the wait. Because, I mean, this game is amazing, but it's also amazing because of its attention to detail. And I can probably, I can probably guess that the reason why Slightly Mad are delaying it so many times is because they want it to be as the best as possible. They don't want to fall into the trap of releasing an unfinished game getting hurt and stung by bad reviews of everyone saying, oh, this is a buggy pile of shit, what the hell? And then by the time they've released patches to fix it, no fuckers playing it anymore because they've all gone back to iRacing or Gran Turismo or whatever. And, hmm, not bad at all. Save that for a sixth place finish. Pretty good. Pretty good. There's one more track I want to take you to. And all I'm going to say is we're going to go there in a GT3 car. GT3 cars were racing there not long ago in an absolutely epic race that was ironically won by a team comprising two-thirds of Gran Turismo players. Yeah, we are going to, in my opinion, the greatest racetrack in the world. Oh yes, we are back in the Ford GT that I started this video in, the GT3 car, and we're at Mount Panorama, Bathurst. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Here we go, let's bring the noise. Down and away, got a good start. Let's see if we can look up the inside. There is some space up the inside to come up towards Hell Corner. Everyone mad on the brakes. Everyone jumps on the brakes. And now here we go, up the mountain straight for the first time. Squeezing between the cars here. My oh my goodness! They're nearly having a crash in front of me. Oh my goodness. No. Oh, 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 oh. I don't think I got that corner quite right. Yeah, here we go. This is why this track is so terrifying. Up the top towards Skyline. Oh, oh, he braked in front of me. That was not good. That was not good. I might have caused a bit of a pile up there. Some of that. Well, that's what happens when you break over Skyline. And don't look to your left because it's a vertical plunge. And now here we go back down the mountain again. We're down into the dipper. Whee! Whoops. This is so tricky because it just gets tighter and tighter. Whee! It's like a roller coaster down here. And now here we go. Down the Conrod straight. Oh, here we go. Feel the car get slightly lighter and more terrifying as a result as you go over this hill. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm on the inside for the chase. I'm on the inside for the chase. I'm on the inside for the chase. Cross your fingers. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Ah! Oh, my God. Yeah, you retake that position. I don't even know what gear I'm in. I just completely shat a hole clean through the floor pan of this car. I fucking love this track, and I fucking love this game. <laughs> oh, my Christ. This straightaway is terrifying. Oh, this is terrifying. Oh, this is terrifying. This is terrifying. Jesus Christ, this corner. Whoa! Goodness me. You feel every single feeling and emotion that you should feel when racing, when doing motor racing. This is, as I say, if Gran Turismo is the ultimate driving simulator, for the moment, I would say this is one of the most, one of the best racing simulators. This is like the final lap of last year's Bathurst 1000. I am Chaz Mostert staring at the rear bumper of Jamie Winkup, and he's desperately trying to save fuel. He's desperately trying to block me. Oh, goodness me, don't go off over there. I'll end up plunging down about several... I don't even want to know how far the drop is over there. Probably far enough for me to be turned into a pile of vomit by the end of it. You know, you ever see, like, kebab vomit on the pavement? Oh, goodness me, he's blocking again. This really does feel like last year's Bathurst 1000 all over again. Come on! Get out of me way! And you know that bit in Pulp Fiction where I have to stab Uma Thurman with the, the adrenaline shot? That's both this track and this game! Ooh, nearly cops up there. That was close. Come on, we can do this. Right, here we go. Got a good run. Can't be right behind. Let's see if, let's see if, oh! Let's see if we can do it. Like Chaz Monster and Forest Elbow. Yes! Yes, we're through. Oh! <laughs> I am genuinely sweating here, ladies and gentlemen. My heart is racing. But I have won the Bathurst 3. The Bathurst 1. <laughs> the Bathurst 10. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been my test and tune of Shift 2 Unleashed. Go buy it now. It's probably absolutely dirt cheap. And see if you can, can get a pre-owned copy where you can still get the DLC because it's most definitely worth it. Uh, also, subscribe, share this video, like it, and do all the other doobly-doo stuff that things on YouTube tell you to do because I want to be massive and get paid a lot. And um, I will see you guys tomorrow, actually, for the next round of my NASCAR 07 series. I'll see you there.